Glory to God. I'm ready to share this powerful word with you. It's going to be a blessing to you. Um, I know some of you are. You really enjoyed that last broadcast. I hope that you get to watch the replay and take notes and just really meditate on a lot of stuff that we're teaching about. Saints, I'm on fire about this. Tonight, I'm talking to you about the power of sowing and reaping here. I'm dealing with this because this apostolic and we're dealing with this real strong. And I was meditating on the fact that uh, King Jesus tells the man, he says, uh, the man asks him, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And out of all the things that King Jesus could tell him, King Jesus goes directly to giving. Now, saints, this was kind of shocking if you think about it. Because King Jesus doesn't even tell the man, come on, let's pray for a little while. Let's pray that you receive me into your heart. It's shocking. If we think about it, it is shocking that King Jesus doesn't tell the man, come on, let's pray that you receive me into your heart and let me be your Lord and Savior. And I'll save you from your sin. King Jesus doesn't go to prayer. See, the church been praying for years and they still don't got power over the devil. The Lord was telling me that through sowing, you lock into the divine path that I called you to. It's through sowing. You can't even stay where God placed you until you start sowing. Why do you think so many people say, I'm loyal, I got your back, I got you, I'm here for you? It's impossible for you to do that without the seed. <laughs> Glory to God. You can't do that. You don't know who you is. <laughs> and when I say you don't know who you is, I'm talking about that flesh realm. That flesh realm is a liar. That flesh realm is the most disloyal realm on you. How you going to say that you loyal to somebody and you're not sowing? How you say that you're going to commit to a God path and you, you haven't even sown into the God path? You, you don't even think money is worth your divine path. So what's going to keep you? Nothing. Saints, it was easy for Judas to betray Jesus because he was already robbing Jesus. You understand? Now, what, how was he robbing him? Was he robbing him in prayer? No, he was robbing him with the seed. Let's go ahead. Saints, and the Lord been talking to me about this because uh, the Lord told me that um, the message of money cometh and the message of seed time and harvest, the power of the message is that it weeds out the tear in ministries. If um if more preachers would preach um on on stuff like this, they'll start seeing stuff. Because a lot of times um the serpent can hide in a garden where sowing is not being intensified. <laughs> you you caught that? Now, because some of y'all been with me for years. How you been with me for years? Because you started sowing into me. There was times when you was about to leave me. But it was your seed that interceded for you. Say, don't be stupid. I had to say nothing to you. It was just the seed interceding for you. But the spirit told me that, that the seed, the message of money coming, the message of the seed, time and harvest, it weeds out the tear in ministries, wrong people in ministries. And see, um, an apostle has to be the one that teaches it because the apostle going to know how to operate in a raw anointing to release it correctly. Because you can still preach the seed and still try to pitch your own put to it and, and block the spirit. And, and, then, and then the message still go to none avail because it's watered down. And so it got to be an apostle releasing the message because how strong it's going to be. 
But that's how the Lord does purgings. See, the Lord was purging the church. Ananias and Sapphira was in there hiding. So, so Peter called him up. Because the church was going forth in miracles and prayer and all that different, all that stuff there. And, and Peter, 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 Peter started purging. Because the spirit was stirring him to purge. And so now Peter is seeing things that he wouldn't see unless he does the purging. You understand? Sowing is how the Lord is able to tattoo your heart with his will. Sowing is how the Lord is able to tattoo your heart with his will. You cannot remember the will of God until you become a seed sower. Why do you think so many people leave the will of God? Because they're not no sower. You can't leave the will of God when you're a sower because your seed going to keep you in remembrance of the will. Now, if you're not sowing, you're just like everybody else. You, you're just a little birdie. You can fly away. You're not no eagle. <laughs> you're just a little birdie. Birds can fly where they want. See, eagles are, 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 are coordinated. But it's all through the seed that God is able to release a spirit of dedication on you, a spirit of loyalty, a spirit of obedience. Saints, the seed unlocks direction and a path. Why do you think that the Bible says that Balaam goes with Balak's men? Why did that happen? Because they sowed a seed into Balaam. The Bible said that he received the diviner's feet, which mean that they were sowing into him. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And so once they sow into him, they was unable to pleasure him with that seed. And now he intoxicated with their requests. Isn't that the same thing Solomon did? Sold into the Lord, intoxicated the Lord. Now the Lord is intoxicated with Solomon's request. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Because the seed dominates the spirit world. Why do you think rappers collaborate on songs? Do you think that they just felt good about each other? No, they got a, they got a, they got a seed that they got to sow. If you want a rapper to collaborate on your song, you got to sow a seed into them for them to do a, what we call a feature. Rappers don't just begin on songs with each other. Musicians don't be just getting on songs with each other. They do the feature because of a seed that's being sown. Sometimes it's, it's 10, 10, 10,000. Sometimes it's 100,000. Sometimes it's 500 or, or, or I want to say 50,000. Sometimes it's 20,000. But it is a seed that has to be sown for the feature to happen. So even the world has governed itself with seed time and harvest. The world has done that faster than the children of God. And this belonged to the children of God. Saints. The law of attraction, that's the seed. The world has taken that and they be decreeing stuff at Fortune 500 companies. If you join a certain worldly business, they'll have you meditate and call in customers and call in how much you're going to make and call in how much clients you're going to attract. That's all belong to you. The world been getting rich off of your laws. Wow. Wow. And saints, I want you to catch this. Whenever you're sowing seed, you become captured about the assignment that the Father wants you to complete on earth. To the degree that nothing 
either left or right, can divert you from that assignment. But it's all through the seed. People cannot remain in the will of God because they're not seed sowers. If any man can rob God with money, you surely will rob God with your oxygen because money is lesser and it's actually, it's actually at a lower plane. So if you can rob God with money, you surely gonna rob God with your time, your path, your life. Because the seed is going to actually be the, 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 the driving force for you to give God everything else. Are you catching me? The seed is going to pitch you in the posture mentally to give the Lord everything else that you have. Your body, your time, your relationships, your company, your atmosphere. So, so when a man or a woman don't sow, they're not loyal to anything. They're not committed to anything. They're not faithful to anything. They're just wanderers. They flock to any entertainment that is. They're, they're not faithful to anything. They're not committed to anything. See, some of you all that follow me, the reason why you're so committed to me is because you're sowing into me. You see what I'm saying? People just watch me for fascination. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you saw into me because you understand the divine eternity in this. You understand? So it, it, it is, 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 uh, is, 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 um, is bloodline, is family. But, but with other people, it's just audience and entertainment. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's why you see me rarely on Facebook. I'm rarely on Facebook because you don't commit to audience and entertainment. You commit to family. You commit to army. And see, um, the spirit was telling me that even with Gideon, the Lord gave him an observation and said, watch who sow themselves. Watch who take on the seed and sow themselves. And that's who you pick as your army. Don't pick the widespread people that you got around you. Don't pick the people just because they, 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 they think that you're awesome and you're amazing and you're powerful and you're great. You're great. Don't pick them. Look for the people that sow themselves fully to the moment. And he said, that's, that'd be your army. You know who they is because they'll be your army. And so you can look to them and know that they are the ones that are actually going to win battles with you, not the large multitude that you have. Now, I want you to look at this in a spiritual sense as well. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, it didn't say to pray against the evil or fast against the evil that shall be upon the earth. It didn't say that, though you can't do that. It says give a portion of seven and give a portion of eight because you do not know what evil shall be upon the earth. So Ecclesiastes clearly told you that giving is the protection against the evil agenda. And giving is the weight in the spirit so that the evil agenda can't be accomplished against you. Now, saints, if, if the Lord would have told the, the rich man to, uh, if he would have told him to pray, he would have did it joyfully. <laughs> If the rich man said, Lord, what could I do to be saved? And he said, come on, bow your heads and lift your hands to heaven. And let's pray this prayer. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus as Lord of my life. I repeat. I'm, it's shocking to me that the Lord didn't do that. Saints, we got to dwell on this. Why isn't King Jesus telling the man a sinner's prayer? Why? This is now, mind you, you can't get into heaven because of Elijah. You can't get into heaven because of, of the law. Of you get into heaven because of Jesus. So why is King Jesus not telling the man, let's pray a prayer? Why does he go into the law of giving? Because saints, the law of giving 
is the activity of those whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The law of sowing is for those whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He tells, the man, asks, the man didn't ask him, how can I receive another anointing? How could, the man said, how could I get into heaven? And he tells the man, okay, I'm going to introduce giving to you. I'm going to introduce the, the law of the seed to you. Saints, that's enough for you to really think about this. Why would King Jesus do that? Why? Why? The man trying to get saved. He ain't trying to get no harvest. The man trying to get saved. He ain't, the man asking for eternal life. What, what's up with that, King? What, what's, what, why, why would you tell him to start giving? Because saints, the secret behind eternal life is learning how to give into the Lord. That's the secret to eternal life. Because saints, on earth, people depart from the path that leads to eternal life because they're not giving into that path. So there's no root in them. There's no power for them to remain in the path because it's going to be the seed that keeps you there. The seed is what protects your vows unto the Lord. It's the seed that keeps your eyes open. Your eyes will become shut if you don't keep on sowing. Because let me tell you something, how the Lord locks up your eternal life, anyway, he locks it up in a prophet. So King Jesus is going to come to you and he's ready to deliver you and bless you. But guess how he's going to do it? He's going to use a prophet to do it. Let's go to Luke chapter 16 here. Wow. The Lord protects your soul in his will through your honor towards him. If you don't honor the Lord, it's impossible for you not to sin against him. Because honor, if it's not being done, dishonor will be done. Either one is going to be taking root. So once you're not honoring God, you have to dishonor him. And all sin is dishonor. So when you're, when you're not sowing, you, you have to become dishonorable. It's impossible for you not to. So the seed is protecting you from dishonoring the Lord. And dishonoring the Lord is protecting you from the will of God. Think about that. When you dishonor the Lord, it's impossible for you to stay in his will. When you're not sowing, it's impossible for you to stay in the will of God. It's impossible for you to stay in the will of God. Saints, I know this for sure. I've met many people and they couldn't, they couldn't remain because they were thieves. You see what I'm saying? I knew of a boy one time. The boy told me, he said, you know, you have done so much for me, prophet. I, I want to bless you. And so... I prayed for the boy. I spoke the blessing over him. Now I prophesied to him. The boy gets the job right after I pray for him. And guess what? The the boy, he doesn't even he doesn't even sow or anything. He just goes. I, I think he joined the church, started sowing into them, and still was broke. Still was broke. Still ain't have none. Went all around the circle. Because see that seed was supposed to go into me. <laughs> I, you ain't had no job. You ain't had no favor. You, the, the prophet just released favor over you. Just prophesied over you. Opened up a door in the spirit. And then you go rob the money. And then you go around in circles. But see the spirit constantly giving you an opportunity to live your best life. That's why the prophet comes. The prophet comes for you to live your best life. The prophet is sent to bring you into your, your actual um, scenery for the will of God, how you're supposed to be living. Now let's go to Luke chapter 16 here. I want to show you something. Luke chapter 16. Let's go here because Luke chapter 16 is actually... Strapped with so much revelation is shocking. All right. Let's let's go here to verse um, 27. 
Um, then the rich man said, I pray thee therefore, father, he's talking to Abraham, that you would send Lazarus to my father's house, that, that you would send, uh, I pray thee therefore, father, that thou wouldest send, us, send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, I have five brothers, in verse 28, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Watch this here. Let's go to verse 29. Verse 29 says this. It says, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let your brothers hear them. Saints, now I want to shock you with this revelation. Why did the Bible say that you have Elijah and the prophets? Remember I told you, Moses is greater than Elijah. Look at what Abraham said. He didn't even, Abraham didn't even acknowledge Elijah. Meanwhile, Elijah is a God and mighty and powerful and great and glorious and awesome and wonderful. He's mighty. He's amazing. He's supernatural. He's wonderful. He's immortal. But look what the Bible said. You have Moses and the prophets. Abraham didn't even acknowledge the spirit of Elijah. Because the spirit of Moses is actually the one that brings you out of bondage. Because wisdom. The spirit of Moses is actually going to be the one that starts to teach you how you should sow. How you should, uh, how you should yield to God. How you should let wisdom take over. It's Moses. It's Moses that's the spirit of wisdom. You see, he don't even mention Elijah. Meanwhile, Elijah is a God, a father in the spirit, and he, he is his own nation and he's mighty. But according to functionality, Moses is higher because of that wisdom factor. All right. You see, uh, Moses never prayed to die. Moses never. Um, um, but him and Elijah both ran from their oppositions at one point. Remember when Moses ran from the men? After they said, we saw you kill the other man the other day. And then Elijah ran from Jezebel. So they both did that in that sense. But when we deal with wisdom, wisdom is actually a place where your mentality is real strong. The mentality is extremely strong. A wise man has a mentality that's very different. That's why I was talking about worldly men can't talk about how men think. Because my mind is genius. I do thousands of teachings in, in weeks, in a week. I do all type of teachings a week and my mind is genius. So you can't, you can't possibly compare me to a natural man that, that smokes a cigarette. <laughs> How dumb is that? <laughs> that drinks beer, that uh, uh, a man that, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't fear God. You can't compare me to a man like that. You can't compare me to a man that likes another man. <laughs> that, that's another thing. <laughs> you can't compare me to a man that, that studies all week and then for 45 minutes, on a Sunday gives you a message that's not even all that deep. You can't compare me to a man like that. So, 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 so there's levels. There's levels. There's levels. So, so Moses understands the seed. Now watch this here in verse, verse 29. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In verse 30, it said, and he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. So what the rich man says, no, if you let somebody from the dead show themselves to my brothers, they will actually repent. And watch what, watch what Abraham responds to him. Verse 31, he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead, which is very powerful here, which shows you the power of your prophet in your life. That if you can't believe your prophet, there's, there's no hope. There's no hope. It's not like, hey, okay, I, did, I just didn't believe the prophet, but I know God got me. I know he loved me. I know he cared about me. Abraham clearly said, if they can't believe Moses and the prophets, if they can't believe the prophet being sent to them, that means that they are alienated from eternal life because that prophet is going to talk to them and show them 
What are the laws for eternal life? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's go here in um, Luke chapter 16. Let's go here in verse uh, Luke chapter 16. Um, in verse 8. And the Lord, Luke 16, 8. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Now let's catch this. The Lord commended. Do you know what commend mean? To applaud, to cheer, to agree with. Wait a minute now. The Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. So let's find this out. This unjust steward is now doing something that is in the wisdom of God. Now let's look at it stronger. It says that um, for the children of this world are in this are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Wait a minute. The children of this world, the world, you serious, Lord? Yeah, 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 yeah. For, for the children of this world, the children of the world, are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Now let's go to verse nine. Now, this is King Jesus talking. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Wait a daggone minute here. Verse nine, I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. That when you fail, that you may receive, that they, that they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Let's go to verse 10. And he that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in the much. Now, you know what this text deals with here, powerfully here? King Jesus is dealing with verse 10. He's saying right here that what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you be at the least. I'm going to let you have a little to see if you'll receive my law before I give you much. So I'm not, I'm not even going to give you much. Everybody going to start off at the base level. Remember, I told you I had to give away everything. And, and it's because I had a lot. You know what I'm saying? I, I, was, I was the type I had chains. I had uh, watches and jewelry rings and all that stuff. And, and you know, I, 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 kind of being showered and showered and showered. So, but you got to start at the base level. And there's a reason for that. Because the base level is the, is the, is the classroom. It's the testing place. That's where the spirit going to be able to talk to you and really try your heart because you don't got much to work with. You see what I'm saying? So, so the spirit willfully, I remember I had all these clothes, right? He willfully had me give away all the clothes. I had only one pair of clothes for, for 21 days. I, I didn't even think about it back then because I didn't have the revelation. I didn't have the visitation from the Lord about 21. So I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> think about that. So I had it for 21 days and then the 21st day I, I had got favor. I told you that story. The man was sold out into Satanism. The man's mother had sold him out into Satanism and told him that he was going to serve Satan and did the actual sacrifice, offered him up. And so meanwhile, do you know that when I was staying at the, the person's house, the man's mother translated to the house. The man's mother translated to the house. You don't understand me. She wasn't there. She translated because she was doing the witchcraft, the, the thing. So she was over in another state. She was over in another state. She came there via the spirit. It was in there. <laughs> and and I, I can tell you some other stuff. It wasn't me that had got into a situation at the time I was with my mother. My mother, my mother was deep into the spiritual warfare stuff. The, the lady went go choke my mother and the and 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 I saw I saw the whole thing. <laughs> like nothing nothing was like just spirit like we was in the spirit we can see, but it was actually in the natural. Like it was physical, like it was actually happening, you see? But what my mother did, my mother uh spoke the blood in in um you know in the name of Jesus and things like that, and boom, boom, boom. And then she left. 
she took her hands off and left. But the woman was actually there because the woman had, she went to the depths of Satan, which is in Revelation as well. It said that, uh, it talks about a people that did not know the depths of Satan or it talks about the depths of Satan because Satan has depths and that's what psychics do. That's what sorcerers do. That's what people do that's, that's deep into witchcraft. They go to the depths. And so while, while, while the son was sold out into that and she had trained the son, imagine the son took me on a shopping spree and the Lord overread the son and had the son like doing a wealth transference to me. So you imagine in the spirit realm, she couldn't locate her son. <laughs> Her son was taken out of his, his altar. Now, I can talk to you about that another time, how there's satanic altars. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk to you about it on here in just five minutes. And so she couldn't locate her son on the altar that she had placed him in the spirit realm because he was, he was, he was operating from my altar. And guess what I was doing on my altar? Sewing. So, so I switched his altars and she recognized it. So she came to the house where he was to check, see what was happening and then tried to fight their loss. But you got to have a level of authority to defeat spirits like that. Because do you know the truth of the matter is if you don't got a level of authority, you actually will lose to that spirit. You see what I'm saying? That spirit could come and actually defeat you. And that's why you see that those, those people try to cast out that devil and the devil beat them down. What's going on there? They, they, according to uh, the altars, they tried to use the altar of the blood of Jesus, but they, they, they wasn't there. They tried to tear down the altar that was operating in, in, in those people's life and it didn't work. And so... That happened there, and while I was while I was in that situation there, there was so much things that I saw, which is kind of shocking. If you don't believe that, um, you uh, if you don't understand cats, 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 cats are demonic. I've seen people become a cat because of demonic possession. And start, all that stuff like that, I've seen all that. I can't remember where that was, where, where that happened. But turn it into a cat, there's more stories than one that I've seen people turn into cats. Um... As the Lord lives, before the election, um, I think it was uh, either before the election, um, I heard a cat, you know, outside of my place all of a sudden, right? And then one of my sons told me, I forget which one of my sons told me, is that um, Biden was saying that he wanted a cat inside of the... White House or something like that. I put two and two together. Because the, 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 I think leading up to the election, probably like going into like November the 1st, November the 2nd, I heard a cat. And, and saints, the cat was crying right by my house. And when it stopped, weird. Even, even Zendaya, Zendaya was, Zendaya was, was like, she said, cat outside. And she was watching the cat. And guess what? The stuff symbolizes different things in the spirit realm, because cats, cats are cats, cats are very demonic. I hope some of you all don't have any cats. If you do, <laughs> well, that's your lot. You do what you do. It's your thing, baby. Do what you want to do, Lord. If you want to have Garfield in your house, then let Garfield be in your house. If you love the devil, then, then love him on. Love, love Satan. Kiss him. Make love to Satan. Do what you do, baby. Now, but the man 
was operating like a cat at one point. He manifested. Like we was inside his house and he manifested. He manifested as a cat. Like full blown. Yeah, yeah. And, and crawling. We have done deliverance on people that literally turned into animals. And guess what? When they turn into animals, their bones can move. Their bones can be taken out of place supernaturally. So you know how your elbow would break? Their elbow would be all over the place and no breaking. Their neck can move. All type of body parts can move and, and no breaking. I've seen all that stuff. And even while I was younger, I never ran from it. I understood the spiritual implication. You start seeing spirits very early. I remember, I remember when I was younger, my eyes, at first I used to think that everybody could see what I was seeing. Because you'll, you'll drive past a building and see a big old spider over the building. And you're like, a big old spider right here. And it's like something out, out of those movies. And you think that everybody can see the spider and you realize, oh, this is the discerning of spirits. Not everybody could see that there's a spider right here. Or when I was in school, I used to see spirits on people. And I used to pray for them. When I was a little boy, I used to be in school and I would see like a demon on someone's shoulder or see a demon on someone's chest. Now, when I saw the demon by their chest, I, I would know that they're either having heart murmurs. They was having um, what you call that asthma attacks. Um, they was either either having some type of uh, irregular heartbeat, some weird type of thing with the heart. I would know what what the thing symbolized. If I saw the demon by their head, which was normally what we call like a like a big old tarantula spider, I knew that they would have migraine headaches. <laughs> and that was when I was a little boy. So I used to pray. I used to pray, and I, I I didn't do nothing like that would 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 cause no scene. I would call them over to the side when we got opportune time, whether after school or whether whether when we got a free time at recess when we playing sports, playing basketball. And I say, come in. I said, you you you've been having this stuff wrong with your head, right? You've been having headaches. And like, yeah, 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 yeah. And the 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 thing that I was seeing will always add up to some type of thing with the brain. The problem that they was having was connected to the brain. If it was the heart, it was connected to the, the, the by the heart area, it's connected to either the lungs or some type of thing. And the Lord, he uses different animals to symbolize things. So, so the spider, its job is to keep you in a web. That means that you never find the truth. The spider is look at look at what a spider does. It studies the fly, it studies its prey, and then it waits until the prey is close enough to wrap it in a web. Watch this here. The fly cannot get out. And the fly tries to get out but can't. That's why a lot of times people try to break out of addictions because they have a fly on them. I, I mean they have a spider on them spiritually. So the spider will keep you in the web. So you say, I'm going to break out, break out, break out, break out. You can't break out because the spider got you hedged in. You're in a web. The web got to be broken. And you can always track back the web to something that you have allowed, whether it be a conversation with somebody, a connection with somebody, a path you pick, a word you spoke, something that you set in motion, uh, something that somebody spoke over you, um, a conversation of, of, of slander. Sometimes if you talk with people and you slander somebody, you step into a web. That's why it's like the drama never stops because there's a spider. The spider is in the background, just got everybody hedged in. That's why they can't break it. That happens a lot with gang members. The reason why people never solve gang violence is because the spider is in the back. So even if somebody tried to uh, break the feud or the beef with the other person, it can't be broken because the spider is the one that needs to be broken. The spider is causing the strife, the hatred, the competition, and, and the spider will magnify things that will keep you in the web. Like, oh, you know, he got my girl or, or oh, he repping another gang or stuff, stuff like that. That's why people never get to the end of things. 
You often see that a lot. If somebody kill one person, the, they try to seek revenge. The party of the person that got killed wants to get the other party that killed the party killed as well because the spider is in the back. So the web, it never comes to a solution. Everybody is locked into a certain mindset, a certain uh, propaganda, a certain... Um, the same thing with the media. In America... Our media right now is underneath the spider. That's why they're censoring everything, which is, which is, um, is, is kind of, um, is, 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 but that's what happens when the web is there is a, is a propaganda is a, is a pattern that needs to be portrayed to keep people in the darkness. You see what I'm saying? To keep people, um, adversarial to what God wants. And th that's why the prince of the power of the air, that's why the Lord talked about um, him being judged. Okay, because the judgment is against that type of system that governs the airways. You see what I'm saying? That gives wrong um, reports, wrong news. You know, I don't really advise any of you all to begin flu shots. I know I know some of you all may get flu shots. I don't, I don't know if you do. But I want to advise you to get flu shots. I advise you, like every every um, cold season, what I do is you be led by the Spirit. Um, you be cautious of, of 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 just doing things just because it's in your power to do it. But you just stick with the schedule of the Holy Spirit, and um, for the most part. You could use the spirit realm to overtake the natural realm. And so a lot of times you hear me may boast and say, I don't got no sickness and disease. I don't got one pain in my body. I don't have headaches. I don't have body aches. I don't have no issues. But if I be honest with you in the full portion of this is that it's not just, you know, I just have health because I'm young. No, no, it's not that. I know how to receive the health covenant. And I want I want you to realize that as well. Place a demand on your health, even though you don't have no sickness, even though you don't have no diseases or no pains. Respect the Lord and, and praise him that by your stripes I am healed, even though ain't nothing happening to you. If you always wait for stuff to happen to you, you're actually going to be slower than the devil. Because when stuff manifests, you actually be at a disadvantage. You know that, right? Because you're trying to catch up to what's manifesting. So think about it. Like say, say you say you get a cold in two weeks, which I pray that none of you all get colds. But imagine that when you get the cold, you start decreeing against colds or you start decreeing for your health. Now you should have did that today. You see what I'm saying? So now two weeks later, it happens, but Satan had already was building leverage to make that happen. So once it does happen and you try to speak against it, you like behind schedule. You did. Because if, if you was if you was already handling it, it's like it's easy for you to break it. Say, think about a yoke. If, if it's tied real tight, right, it's kind of difficult to break. Just think about it in a natural sense. If you think about your shoestrings, if you tie it real tight, but if the, if the shoestrings is still a little loose and you go to untie it, you actually could tie it quicker. Uh, all right. But if, if the shoestring is tied extremely strong, it's actually hard. You may have to try to bite at it. You might try to have to get a pen, a knife. You, you're trying to break, break the shoestring because it's extremely tight now. Now, when somebody was looping it and it was still loose, you could have broke it easily. Now, saints, think about it like this. A lot of times Satan is pitting on a yoke around your neck like a necklace. And so even if you look at how someone pits on a necklace, it takes time. They got to get it around your neck. They got to make sure that it's on correctly. And then they have to fasten it. What if you're always on your P's and Q's in the spirit? And the minute Satan tried to get it off your neck, you done broke it off. He didn't even get no leverage on it. And this is how you have to be when the Bible say casting down imaginations and high things that exalt itself. Because Satan going to try to come every single day. 
And some days Satan takes breaks because he know that you are at an all time high spiritually. And that's another thing that I want you to catch as well. When Satan knows that you're at an all time high spiritually, Satan doesn't give his best. Satan waits for opportune times. He needs to see some little dwindling down. He needs to see you rest a little bit and like calm down from the intensity in which you're operating. Satan needs to see you start to open up and, 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 and become a little more uh, accessible, a little more uh, loose, a little more curious, a little more weary, a little more bored. There's stuff like that that has to happen. Then Satan comes in with the big. The big stuff. But remember, it said, catch us the what? The little foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine. When you're at the vine, remember, the vine is a place where Jesus is strong in your life. That's why I said that I am the vine, you are the branches in John chapter 15. And without me, you can do nothing. Because when you're in the realm of the vine, the anointing is strong. The power is strong. Angelic ministry is strong. Your, your zeal, your passion, your desire to serve the Lord is strong. Everything is at its highest. And so it said, catch us the little foxes. Notice it says little foxes, not big foxes, because Satan is not going to send the big stuff when you're at an all-time high. Because Satan already knows that God's big and his, and the, and his big is not going to match. God's big is going to win. So the little foxes mean things that you can't really see. Things that you really can't detect until it's too late. Unless you're watching and praying. Now, if you're watching and praying, you'll be able to detect it. But if you're not, you're not. It's just going to keep on building until it's a big fox. And so as a little fox, you can't really see it. That's the goal of Satan. If you think about it, what is Satan's biggest agenda? Blindness. Blindness. Blindness, because you can't even be in fear until you're in blindness. Why do you get fearful? Because you're blind to something that God is saying, something that God will do, something that God has already done. So you even get fearful through blindness. Blindness is the biggest agenda of Satan. Blindness. And blindness, within blindness is ignorance. Knowledge that you don't know is really blindness. Adam became a blind man. That was the beginning of blind men. We saw blind men in the day of King Jesus, but when did the blind men really begin? They began in Adam's day. Adam was the first blind man walking on the earth. He became blind. When his eyes opened up, it was the beginning of blindness. Blindness is the agenda of Satan. Why do, do they take Samson's eyes out? Because they want him to be blind. The story of Samson is a revelation of Satan's greatest agenda for blindness, for blindness. Why did the Bible say that when they went go punch King Jesus, they put a blindfold around him and said, prophesy who hit you? Hallelujah. 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 Did you, are you hearing me? Huh? Huh? They put a blindfold over King Jesus and said, prophesy who's hitting you? If you're a prophet, prophesy. Wow. Wow. The purpose of Satan is blindness. The purpose of Satan is blindness. Why do you think that when King Jesus knocks out uh, Saul, which became Apostle Paul, what's the first thing that happens to him? He goes blind. Why? Because he was actually already blind. He couldn't see. So God took away his natural sight because that was keeping him from his spiritual sight. When he received his spiritual sight, then God gave him back his natural sight. Come on, man. You got <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all sleeping. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> he already was moving in his natural sight. So the Lord took away his natural sight because it was blocking his spiritual sight. When he got his spiritual sight back, then God gave him his natural sight. Because remember, the Bible said that the Lord told Ananias, which is not the Ananias that stole the money in the in the latter part. This is a different Ananias. That's why he told the disciple Ananias, go, 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 go minister to him because he's praying. He's praying inside of that house. Now, what's going on here, people of God? He's praying. He's seeking God. He's crying out for the Lord to take over his life, to have mercy on him, to use his life. Why? Because he 
has his spiritual eyes finally open. So, so all those things begin to happen because we see him now operating in what? Spiritual sight. Now God restores back his physical sight. Oh my gosh. How many of y'all understanding this? If you, if you understand this, shout hallelujah on this line. Hallelujah on this line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to see something here. Um, I want to see something because I, I have a strong, I have a strong flow right now. Wow. Samson, Philistines, plan. All right. If you understand all of this, just shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go ahead and we're going to go back to Luke chapter 16. How many of y'all enjoying this? <laughs> We've been teaching for over going on three hours now. We soon to be at three hours. Now, let's go to, um, I want to take you here, but first, um, wow. The story of Samson is so, it's so moving. You know, I find myself crying at that story. And you don't even try to cry. If you just meditate on it, just it just make you, it'll make you cry. Because Samson, let's go here. Uh, let's go to Judges chapter 16. Look at Judges chapter 16 here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, Judges chapter 16, verse 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her, he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines. Now you want to catch this, the lords. So, so th these were the Philistinian Jesuses. I can preach five hours on that. Satanic. Now, look at this here. In verse 18. Saying, come up this once, for he has shown me all that, that all that is in his heart. Now, saints, you imagine Samson Imagine his face when this is going on. Samson is shocked. Because Delilah's still in his presence right now. He, he, she said, hey, hey, hey. Samson is shocked. Now, let's go here. Verse 18, come up this once, for he showed me all his hearts. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hands. Saints, Delilah did this because she was being sown into. The Philistines used the seed to unlock Delilah. Saints, Delilah is, is, is Delilah has received this position because the Philistines were sowing into her. Look, they came with a seed in their hand and they brought money in their hand. Wow. Wow.
Let's go to verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Remember, I was dealing with sleep in the last broadcaster. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven dreadlocks of his head. Now, I, another day I'm going to do a teaching on the seven locks and what they represent. Oh, it's going to be deep. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm I, I want to I wanna live my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And live your life, and live your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, oh, that's not how it go, man. It goes some other way, man. I'm trying to get jiggy with it. Nah, 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 nah. Now, let's go here to verse 19. And she began to afflict him. Way. And his strength went from him. Now, saints, when it said that she began to afflict him, this is twofold. Afflict him in the soul, but afflict, afflict him in the physicality too. They was beating him. Wow. They like... They, it's like the Philistines, like goons, like they just came in, boom. So, so they, they, they're, they're crucifying him. I want to go here to verse 18 because the spirit just told me to magnify this. Their money that they brought in verse 18, they brought money in their hand. They brought a seed to establish the will of Satan on earth. Saints, they brought money to establish the kingdom of Satan on earth. They brought a seed. This goes back to Luke chapter 16. It said the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. King Jesus said that in Luke 16. Judges 16. Judges. Judgment. Judges. Judgment. Judges. Judgment. Judges. A judge is someone that releases judgment. In Judges 16, it says that they brought money. And now they're beating up Samson, who is the savior of that day. They use large money to establish Satan's plans. They use large money to pit in effect the will of the devil, the will of demons, the will of evil spirits. They, they use large money. They sold large money into Delilah to get this plan accomplished. Delilah was the soul of the Philistines. And shockingly so, the saw of Delilah worked. <laughs> I, I'm teaching you this to stir you up because I want you to realize how Satan has been using the kingdom of, uh, of God and, 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 and some of the people in the kingdom of God don't, don't even know how to flow like this. But even the Philistines was flowing in seed time and harvest. They sold they, they, they let Delilah had the time and now they got the harvest of Samson being underneath their slavery and Samson is now being beat up by them and this was their seed name. The name of their seed was to be lords over Samson. They named their seed that they will have lordship over Samson. And the name of their seed came to pass. 
It worked. Oh, this is real deep. This is deeper than you know, but I'll just keep on going. I'll keep on going. Let's go to verse 20. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. So she mocked them, saints. She told Samson, but guess what? Why is this even being effective? Because the Philistines sowed large seed. They sowed into Delilah. So, so when we see her keep on questioning Samson, she wasn't just questioning them for her. She was questioning because the seed is a law in the spirit. When seed being sown, you can use that as a means to get something that you won't accomplish in the earth, accomplish. Her driving force wasn't that she was just curious. Her driving force was the seed that they had sown. So, so let's go strong on this story here. Hazel, ain't this deep? Uh, They use the seed to accomplish satanic kingdom will. Saints, you got to look at the depth of this. They use seed sowing to accomplish the plan of the enemy. Saints, remember I told you, how do you think that we had all these bot votes in the election in America? There was a big payoff. Why you think that they stopped the votes at November the 3rd and then it, they, they tried to stop the votes. They didn't want to keep on counting President Trump because he, they, they had to declare him winner. Why you think? Because there was all type of money moving on the law. People was getting paid off. By the way, it's coming to light now. Everything that I was prophesying, this stuff coming to light. Somebody said, just give me the light. I do. <laughs> Just give me the lame one, woo. Just give me the lame one, woo. I was tired of hearing that song. I want to slap Sean Paul, John Paul, whatever we we'll call it. Saints, that was the beginning of Bop Votes. Like I said, when 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 uh, 106 and Park and MTV would play that music, they ain't nobody listen to. I want to chicka, boy, chicka, boy, chicka, chicka. Come on, Sean Paul. Somebody cut this off. Ain't nobody voted for this song on here. Just give me the line on woo. <laughs> Brother was up there playing that song. Saints, you ever drove with somebody and they playing with that goofy music, boy? You be up there. You be trying to play with them, but you you get the boom 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 boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you, 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 you ever tried to be serious because you ain't want to laugh, but somebody up there playing me. <laughs> uh, and you up there, they up there driving, they serious because that's their music. <laughs> And, and then a the person never finished no sentences. They don't finish sentences. You know that, right? So, like, they don't got lyrics. They just got, like, words. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, boom, 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 boom. I go. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, boom, 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 boom. Hey, man. Boom, 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 boom. Where? Boom, 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 boom. You in the back seat trying to hold your laughter in. Like, hey, my boom. And then they'll turn the music up and you starting to see church folks so you trying to pitch your head down in the car. Hey, man, yeah. Hey, man. You done pitch your jacket over your head and they're up there. 
Amen. That's a big God. They're, they're playing that music. That'd be the worst when somebody playing some goofy music and you see people that you know. You pulling up, you hear big old, big old. Big old, big old. My name is Marcus. My name is Style. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I, 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 I'm from Dickow. Like, come on, man. Come on. This Somebody get the pistol and shoot. <laughs> you got to shoot correct. Huh? When you shoot, you got to shoot correct. Make sure you hit the target. Pow! Shoot in the feet. Let, give me the gun. Give me the gun. Pow! Pow! Just, come on, man. Tranquilize me. Yeah, man. Since how many y'all ever saw that woman? What's her name? Erica Badu. She she made she made some perfume talking about the perfume is is is. She made the perfume talking about it's gonna it, it, it's to it's to smell like her. Blessed be all the Presbyterians. What in the? She said that she made. I don't even want to talk about. it. Let me keep on moving on because I'm still trying to. I'm trying to enjoy life. I'm not trying to. Let that bother me. She talking about she trying to make a scent that smell like. Oh, she under the. Let's go ahead. So we find out something powerful here that um, they have large money in their hand. I can't get this out of my mind. Saints, they came with a seed. That's how they got the will of Satan to occur. If they came with a seed and sold it to establish the kingdom of Satan, how much more your seed sowing is to establish the kingdom of God in your life? If they use the seed to establish God's will on the earth, how much more the seed established the, the, the kingdom of God on earth. They use money in their hands so that Delilah could accomplish the plan of Satan against uh, uh, Samson. And it worked. Wow, 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 wow. Now watch this in verse 20. It says that he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as I did other times before and shake myself. Oh, man. <laughs> and he, let me not cry like that because some of y'all sons be crying like that and you be beating them. Oh, uh, you wonder why your child got all that reflex. You done, they done scared you. You ever got around a child, you lift, toss, hold on, I'm just trying to, they done, hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to, I'm trying to rest, rest my hand. You all right? You all right, little fella? All right? She what? He traumatized because every time he saw that hand lift, <laughs> he flew against the wall like Martin when Hitman Hearns, <laughs> when Tommy Hearns knocked him back. <laughs> and my... He, he flat he having flashbacks. <laughs> he having flashbacks of all them times when 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 that hand went up, that means that he was going up with it. Saints, ain't that be the worst thing when your parent try to hit you in public when you try to be cool and they hit you real good and <laughs> you can hear the sound like that didn't hurt. And then you you gotta be careful because you try to show out in front of your friends. Tell them, that didn't hurt. She said, well, "What did it hurt? You want me to give you some?" And she done grabbed you. She done choked. Ah! <laughs> you done turned into Elmo. You just all the way embarrassed. You can't even you can't even hide nothing no more. It's just it's just you done. <laughs> Saints, 
some people, some children waiting for the new heaven and new earth because they ain't gonna get no whoopings. <laughs> you gotta whoop these children nowadays. These children, these children, have got all type of all type of spirits trying to influence them, dog. Now, let's go here. Now, the house. Okay. Let's go here. Now, I don't want to deal with all this because it. I want to talk to you about the, the power of this, but we'll go here. But this is another set of teachings here. Cause I, I can teach 10 hours on that and I, I ain't. Saints, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Once you smell some Popeyes, your whole life gonna change. I just wanna tell about two or two of y'all on that. Once you, <laughs> once you smell some Popeyes, your whole life gonna change. I just wanna tell about two people on that. There's just two people that need, need to hear that. Once you smell some Popeyes, your whole life going to change. Some of y'all been having this strength. You've been having all this strength. All this, all this, 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 ooh, make your hair won't pop off. But once you smell some pop Hey, Amen. Luke chapter 16. The seed is the cold word into the glory power of God. The seed is the cold word into the glory power of God. Every time you sow a seed into your apostle, your prophet, you're creating a covenant. You're creating a covenant where anointing, glory, peace, deliverance, victory can flow into your direction. Every time you sow a seed, you're telling God that you're ready for the next episode of favor. You're ready for the next episode of power. Your seed communicates your readiness for promotion. Your seed communicates your readiness for promotion. Every time you sow a seed, you're operating in a financial prayer language. The seed has angelic tongues in it because you communicate with angels telepathically. Every time you make a decision to set out to honor the Lord, you're attracting the ministering spirits of the New Testament, the new blood covenant. These ministering spirits was reserved to release the children of God into their covenant in this day and time. Not in Elijah's day, not in Malachi's day, not in Ezekiel's day. These ministering spirits was reserved post blood, after the blood after the blood has been shed. The blood of King Jesus has been shed now to give you power where you could sow, you could reap, and you can live at the level that you want to live. The seed is like you placing a crown on the Lord's head. That's why he places a crown on your head because you got to reap what you sow. Every time you sow a seed, you promoting God. That's why God promotes you. Sowing gives favor to God. That's why God gives favor to you. Because you're giving him access into your financial place. That could be clearly blocked off from the Lord. But when you choose to sow, you're saying, I'm giving you favor. The power of sowing is that it births loyalty because now you're going to be tied in into the man of God that you're sowing into. The way that you develop a stream where God could implant impartation into you is with the seed. The seed is where you become trustworthy to the Father. I want to show you something in Luke chapter 16. Let's go here. Verse 9, and King Jesus said, Make to yourselves friends with unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, that you may they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Now, habitations is real important because it's dealing with uh, geography is dealing with a house, a home, a place to live. Look what King Jesus said, make to yourselves friends with unrighteous mammon. That means even though if you see somebody living some type of life, don't cancel out the ability for wealth transference to happen. 
You know why? Because some wealth transference is going to happen because you choose to be friendly to people that you know ain't serving your God. But you don't, that, that this, this actually means you don't go up to them and be like, hey, you, you heathen, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for me. So I don't care about all this stuff that y'all doing. Guess what? Y'all going to have to pay me this stuff. He said, make friends with unrighteous men. Do you understand what that means? Unrighteous. That means that this money was got, it was achieved by sin. It was achieved by wickedness. It was achieved by rebellion. It was achieved by witchcraft. It was achieved by grieving God. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to send you with the wisdom of a serpent, not to interfere with the possibility of me transferring favor out of, their, out of the level of habitation that they have to you. Let's go here. Let's go further on that. It says in verse 10, he that is faithful of a few things, I make him rule over much. And he that is un, un, unfaithful, unjust in, in a little things will be unjust also with a lot of things. Let's go to verse 11. If you therefore, now I want to also say this too. Luke chapter 16, verse nine is why you work a worldly job. Because when you make friends with unrighteous mammon, that means that you go work for a boss. That boss, that job that you're working for, they may not be preaching the gospel. But God put you there to be friends with that company. That's why you got hired to the company. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing how you can get understanding about these mysteries? Because King Jesus was talking in parables. He wasn't explaining himself here, but I'm, I'm, explaining, I'm explaining to you in this, in this new dispensation here. That's why you work for a natural man, work a natural job, and that job ain't talking nothing about the gospel. That job ain't talking nothing about Jesus. That job ain't, because he said, make friends with unrighteous mammon. That may get a job, get hired, work there, get there, da, 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 da. All right, so now you understand the purpose of how your job comes into play with the will of God in your life. Why, why when, you, when you're there, don't let the devil trick you and say, oh, I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be fasting and serving the Lord. Yeah you, yeah, you could be fasting and serving the Lord, but guess what? You ain't going to have no money to dominate in this earth realm. <laughs> now, let's go to verse 11 here. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now, I want you to think about this here. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Remember, I just told you that this is dealing with also your job. Your job is where you're making friends with unrighteous mammon. Now, watch King Jesus brings everything to the forefront because now he explains what he really meant there. Because he said, if you therefore have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that means that you're getting this money because you made friends with it. How could you make friends with it? You got hired at a job. You got connected with a, with a company. You got connected with a business. So, so now he's saying, if you therefore have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? which shows you that the Holy Spirit will give you favor prophetically and speak to your boss, speak to someone to invite you as an employee, to receive you as an employee because it is the tactic of God. It is the strategy of the Lord for you to be able to have seed to sow. Now you understand why Proverbs 28 verse 20, it says the faithful man shall abound with what? Blessings. Because the first man was abounding with blessings through his seed. Wow. 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 So, so, so when the word of God says that, that um, if you are not faithful, that word faithful, it said the faithful man shall abound with blessings in Proverbs 28 verse 20. So how could you abound with blessings? How could you keep on having more riches? Because that's what the blessing really is. If we think about it, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. 
So, 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 so how, how could a faithful man abound with more riches? Because he's sowing money. That's why he's getting richer and richer in money. Because he's sowing it and he's faithful with what? Unrighteous mammon. Because that's what God gives you first. He don't give you the true riches first. So some of you all being, you, you be encouraged when you start off with God and let, let him coach you. Let, let him take you into the glories of this because when you start off, it's not the true riches. When you start off, it's the unrighteous man because he got to try you. He got to try your priorities. He got to try your focus. What, what you going to pick first here? What are you going to prioritize? Where am I in this equation? Where are you going to choose to celebrate me? What seed will you offer up to me to honor me? What seed will you sow unto me that, that will, will bless me? What seed will you choose to show me that you know that I am the one giving you the power to get wealth? And so he'll pit in your power the ability to show your trust. He won't force it because he's a gentleman. The Lord is a gentleman. We are gentlemen. And so the spirit of God, what he's going to do is he's going to uh, give you the wisdom to make friends with a righteous mammon because you're going you're gonna to have to have a way where money can flow to you, where you can invest your servanthood, where you can invest your, 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 your helpfulness. Saints, as that woman was helping Adam in that garden, guess what? Adam was going to pay that woman. But she never got to the glories of all of that. Hold on, be strong. Hold on. As that woman was helping, because, because there was going to be increase. Remember, um, what's his name? Uh, Elkanah. Remember he had two wives, uh, Penina and um, Hannah. And remember, he would take the increase and then he would give some to them and let them, uh, they'll be able to sow out of it and then still have enough to do, do a little something, get your nails done, whatever. So if you think about it, Elkanah, Penina and Hannah was actually the continuation of what was going on with what? Adam. Because Adam, that woman was going to help him sow. Saints, what was really the first woman to sow and help me? Woman, they been sowers. Woman been giants in the seed. You just got to realize it. You, you've been created to be rich. You think, you think, let me tell you something, woman. Why you think that you like nice things? That stuff inside of you by default. And then women that say that they don't like nothing nice, they lying, you know what I'm saying? They lying, they just messing with, you know. You know what I'm saying? Messing with, they messing with a brother with boosy corners, you know what I'm saying? Boosy corners right there, boosy corners. <laughs> quarantine, quarantine. Boosy corners, boosy corners. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit pitted inside of you to love nice things because you was created to inherit the earth. <laughs> Boosie came to Texas and got shot in the foot. I'm like, boy, you, don't come around here. Don't come. <laughs> it shot him right in the leg. Paya! Saints, you imagine you being in a truck and they start shooting. You know you ain't going to be looking cute. <laughs> You're trying to get away all of that. You can't go nowhere, brother. It's, you, it's, it's already done happen. He's trying to get away in the vehicle. <laughs> and you know when you old and you get shot, it takes you longer to heal. <laughs> you know when you old and you get shot, it takes you longer to heal. You know that, right? <laughs> I don't advise none of y'all to shoot yourself or nothing. Don't get shot. But it takes you longer to heal. Your, your healing don't come as fast as normal. You know, it takes you, take you a good amount of time because your bones already take, take your time. That's why. <laughs> 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 
that's <laughs> that's why that's why that's the why the 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 older you get, that's why you you shouldn't be in no gangs. <laughs> You shouldn't be beefing with nobody. You know why? Because blessed be God, you don't want to get shot. <laughs> it's already enough as it is. You try to sit down, take you a while to get up. You talk to ah, God dang. You... Imagine Boosie. They done shot him in his leg. Now he got, <laughs> he got a double portion. Because <laughs> now his, his shin, all of that. They must have shot him in the shin. And that happened all in Texas, right? Right. Well, Texas got them low key snipers. They got them low key snipers because they happen all in Texas. Now look at right here. So Luke chapter sixteen, verse eleven. Now, saints, mind you, the blessing is way more better than the stressing. You know, I've been, I've been, I, I could say this. I've been poor, according to the natural, because I, I remember the time when I ain't had much money, and. I sold my way out. I'm still sowing my way out. I sow seed every single day. That's why there's a miracle anointing on this um, this ministry of how I operate because I'm a sower. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't just uh, I don't just believe in the seed as far as a philosophy. Like I still live by this, and I'm still seeing miracles off of this. Um, I was I was uh, I remember Dr. Murdoch saying that. There's, there's no seed teacher like Prophet Joshua. No seed teacher. Even to this day, he said, there's no seed teacher that teach on seed. He said, Oral Roberts taught on seed. I teach on seed, but there's no seed teacher that teach what you teach. And and the, the reason why I'm able to tap into all these revelations about the seed is because some of the stuff is actually my experiences. Like I know that the seed brings health. I know that the seed activates a health covenant. I know that the seed gives you power over the arrows that fly by day. Because, because most times, different things that's plotted against your life, your seed protects you. I was in that wreck when my, when, when my car was wrecked, and I didn't have one scratch on my body. And it was just minutes before I had just sowed the seed. Right there before I, before I got into that wreck, I had just sowed. Right before I got into my vehicle. And... and my, my my vehicle was at the verge of flipping over a, a, a thing right there, and it, 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 it didn't flip over. And I was inside my vehicle. My, my vehicle, all the damages was just on my vehicle. I had one scratch. Since I remember that day when when it was this white lady. It's always the white people that care about you. Black people just keep on driving. <laughs> man, black people, man, it be the white ones that, that stop and pull on white <laughs> The black, the black people tell us, man, I got, man, I'm late for my meeting right now. Come on, man, come on, you'll be all right. Hobo bo shot, hobo bo shot, hobo bo shot. Is it, and, and a white woman Karen ran out of her vehicle? Karen ran out of her vehicle. She said, Oh my god, oh my gosh, oh my god. I heard somebody screaming, Oh my gosh. And, 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 and here's the crazy thing: the white lady was like. I wanted to say, hey, you about to kill me though. This, this, this your voice alone, the, the only thing, I'm going to die. I'm going to die from that loud voice. You got that, you got that doggone voice like that. Like, who, who raised you? Like, you louder than that chihuahua on the Taco Bell commercial. <laughs> you louder than the Aflac duck. Huh? The Aflac duck. The Aflac duck. You louder than the Aflac duck. I don't even want to buy no insurance no more. You so loud. And Saints, I remember she, then then she got she the, she she got to my window. She bop, bop, bop in the window. And she 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 looked at me like I had I had played a stunt, like it was some type of prank. She said, What? You okay? <laughs> I was like, I was like, but in the back of my mind I had some jokes in my head, right? I was like, where the black people at? <laughs> the black people, the black, the black people. But well, well, basically, it probably wasn't. It, it's not too dominantly black and stuff like that. But I had some jokes in my head. Where, where the black people at? Yeah, where, 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 where the niggas at? <laughs> Let's go to Luke chapter sixteen. 
But I made it out of there and the seed, the seed causes protection because sometimes I sow, I sow seeds that um, uh, sometimes I may remember Psalm 121 because it said that I preserve your going in and going out. I, I do that because saints, I, I don't, I've never been the type to like pray for things. You see what I'm saying? Like I knew that my seed could unlock it because I Solomon Solomon is the patriarch of that. That that a lot of things that you pray for could be unlocked by the seed. Why are you praying for it when you can just sow and the Lord will ask you, what shall I give you? You see what I'm saying? So so I always been in that sense. Sometimes I aim seeds at either love because 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 betrayal so easy, man. Betrayal so easy. It's easy for you to betray than for you to love. Because you betrayal, it just make you move around, move around, make you fly around, make you just. So I, I always aim seeds at love, and I aim seeds because I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. I already know my love is sure. So I also name seeds at protection. You see what I'm saying? Because I know I'm in a heavy weight with this uh with this uh dispensation of the war that's going on in the spirit. I know that I'm I'm you know I'm chief in this as well. So uh, along with the army of God. So when we deal with those aspects, the protection factor, because you know you're going, you, the devil going to be at your head. There's going to be a uh, biz at your head. You know that. And so those seeds work. I had just sold before I got into that wreck. And everything worked, including to the time where um, I was about to repair my vehicle, right? And I, 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 as a businessman, I felt something went right. And so, so I inquired of the Lord. And while, while I was, while I was, uh, while I was talking with the Lord, somebody called me out the blue and gave me the 411 on everything that I was praying about. And the person had worked for the place where, where, where a vehicle and stuff like that. So he, he, he was like a prophetic snitch. And he told me, they're not telling you this. But I just felt compelled to tell you. And he was like, you know, the, the vehicle is stuff. All this stuff is damaged right here. Your whole thing caught on fire right here. And it's not able to be repaired. But they're going to have you pay thousands of dollars and, and make you think that they're going to repair it. But they actually just hide in the fact that they want the money. So I'm going to tell you like this. Don't do that because it's already broken. It's already severed. It's already, everything is on fire right there. So guess what? The thing about it is. It worked out good, but I sold. You see, the Lord even protect you from scams. You see what I'm saying? He'll protect you from scammers, from people robbing your money. Say, sometimes that has happened to you in your life. Mechanics don't tell you the truth. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost because you'll keep on paying money and they're lying to you. We need the Holy Spirit more than you know. You need the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Sow seeds, honor God, because you, you need to work everything that pit him first because you got an enemy against you. This, this earth is full of adversaries. You got an enemy against you. Pray in tongues, sow seed, praise God. Use everything that keeps the Lord at the forefront. Use everything that keeps him at the forefront. Use everything that keeps him at the forefront. Let's go here. Luke chapter 16, verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful, in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now, this is a question the Lord asks here. Now, saints, that show you that the Lord going to put money in your hand just to test you. That's not your real money. That's not your real money. And I realized that, saints, when I got $7,000, boy, I felt good. I felt like I was balling out. I felt like I was balling out. But guess what I did? I began to sow into someone else's vision, into someone else's ministry, into someone else's, uh, uh, into their prophetic flow. I started sowing into them and I started pushing them and helping them and making stuff easy. And um, that became my fascination. I had that $7,000 and saints, I felt so good. Money make you feel good, man. And see, I was only asking the Lord for $1,000. I got $7,000 and saints, I could tell you a lot of stuff. But but I took that seven thousand, and there was different times when I had that seven thousand. I made sure I would go on a fast. Guess what? I was going on a fast, and I had seven thousand dollars on me because I had predestined in my heart sowing. I had predestined sowing in my heart. 
So even though I had that money, I had already sold that money in my heart. So when it got to me, I, I didn't steal it. I knew that, hey, the Lord gave me more than a thousand. He gave me seven times more. So I started realizing this is a this is a portal in the spirit. So I started sowing and I started sowing into another man's kingdom, into another man's vision, into another man's anointing. I kept sowing into him and sowing into him. And I was never that type that you need to praise me. But sometimes ministries, they want to praise you. They want, hey, are you helping us? And I ain't need all that stuff because I'm on a divine agenda. I got to get to point Z. I'm at point A. I'm going to point Z. I ain't got time to celebrate. I don't need no accolades. I don't need no respect. I don't need no favor. I don't need none of that. I'm going to unlock that in the long run. So I just kept on sowing and kept on sowing. And then the Lord shocked me and gave me another $7,000. I said, what in the world here? And uh, you, you know, the first thing the devil always try to interpret what God does for you. The devil was like, now nah, this is for you to enjoy. I said, no, you lying devil. You's a liar. That ain't the voice of God. This ain't for me no nor enjoy. This is seed money. I ain't come to live on this earth with no seven thousand dollars. What? What I'm about with seven thousand dollars? I got this big old anointing on me. What I'm gonna accomplish with seven thousand dollars? I got this big old grace on me. What? What, what I'm gonna do with seven thousand dollars? And so I shut the devil up real quick. And saints, well, I always tell you, the devil gonna speak to you louder than honor. Honor whispers. Dishonor screams. Honor whispers. Dishonor screams. Satan always going to talk to you about a million stuff for you to disrespect God with that money. And Satan gave me that option. Satan gave me that option many a times. And when I got that second course of $7,000, I sold the crap out of that $7,000. I actually fasted more with that $7,000. And saints, I got to skinny bones. I, 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 um, I made sure... I made sure at the time, I took care of my mother at the time, made sure my mother was good, made sure my mother had food to eat. And I, I knew how to camouflage things. I never wanted nobody to praise me for no fasting. I never was that type that would tell you, hey, you know, I'm in consecration. Man, I used to do all my prophetic meetings. I used to prophesy, do all that stuff. I ain't never tell nobody I was on no consecration. Sometimes I minister underneath consecration. I've done welcome Holy Spirit conferences off of consecration. We was holding strong too. Blessed be God. How many of y'all remember that Atlanta meeting? I did that, man. I was skinny bones in that meeting. How many of y'all remember that? That was 2016. I didn't even want to do that meeting. Towards the end, I think I had did a meeting before that. I think I was in Ohio. And man, I, I got to a point. I was like, man, people dangerous, man. I said, I don't even want to do ministry. I'm close and personal like that. Let me just keep everybody at a distance. I went fooling with nobody. I went to the, I went to the, um, I was inside my bedroom upstairs on my second floor. I had second floor on my, uh, uh, the other house that I have. And I, I was at the second floor and I'm, I'm inside my room. I'm just like, I'm meditating, right? I said, I probably won't do this meeting, huh? And I remember several times I was inside of my room and one, one night I had my, uh, I had my TV on YouTube and I, I wonder, uh, China, you were still pitting up all them videos back then. Somebody was pitting up my videos back then on YouTube in 2016. I was inside of my, my room. I, I made a mistake and fell asleep. I wasn't even going to go to sleep. I had just made up in my heart, just pray all night because things, things wasn't, it wasn't like it was hard, but it wasn't right. You know, I, I felt like, you know, I felt like the gates of hell was was really after me real strong. So I was like, man, I, I just, I just, I just deal with this stuff in the spirit. And that night I, I ended up going to sleep, right? And all of a sudden, when I was conscious, I was vibrating. And like the wind of God knocked me over my bed. And I fell over to the floor. And I couldn't stop nothing. I couldn't even break the, the, the wind. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't break the, the, the hole that is like somebody tossed you out of nowhere. And it's just an overwhelming force. That happened to me. So when I was on the floor underneath the fire of God, I said, whoa. 
And then the Lord started telling me, he said, this is just little, little bits and pieces of your anointing. I'm just letting you feel what you have. You know what I'm saying? But you're a powerful God. And he said, let's do these meetings. You're going to do these meetings for me. So I, I, I did those meetings. And then we was, after that, we went to Houston. And different places, it was kind of crazy. I, was, I would have like a whole discipleship with me. And sometimes it was like so much people. Like you, you would think that we was really in a Jerusalem story. <laughs> I started feeling a lot of uh, a lot of weird withdrawals. You see what I'm saying? Like I still go over to myself. I wouldn't talk to nobody because it's like you gotta like look over your shoulder. You see what I'm saying? Because you're still recruiting folk and you still know who they are. You know what I'm saying? So all that stuff was going on. We did, we did, and then we came to. Um, we did that meeting inside of uh, San Diego. San Diego, I think we hit San Diego like twice. Then I went to, um, was that before San Diego? Then I went to Mississippi. I went to Mississippi there. We prophesied there and it was crazy there. And then uh, we got stuck because the principality there. <laughs> and so the principality was fighting us there. All of our flights, as soon as we got to the airport, they said, well, the flights, all the flights just shut down. It's like, okay, okay, okay. So, ended up ministering to, to, to that guy. What's his name? That crazy guy. We was on live with him. Now, Reed. <laughs> Reed. How many of y'all remember that? <laughs> Reed. The Spirit just gave me his name. Reed. And we want to read right down the line. And remember, read, read. Mind you, I had never met Reed. Reed don't know nothing about me or nothing. And Reed was like, I know that you're Jesus. Right down the line, we was alive. And, and that was, he, I think, um, he actually didn't want to leave me alone. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I was on my way to like, just, just do a video there. He was like, I don't want to leave you. He's like, I just feel so much peace around you. Now, Reed, thank God, he wasn't homosexual. Because <laughs> he, he had a woman that he was duxing now. <laughs> and I, I prophesied that I, we ain't do that on camera because I wasn't going to embarrass him. But I just talked to him off the camera. He had a woman that he was duxing. <laughs> All right, so he, he, wasn't, he wasn't swinging that way. He wasn't sausage party. Material. He 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 had a dux. He had a dux, and and we brought some clarity there and stuff like that. But when we got on the plane, <laughs> when we got on the plane, all of a sudden, uh, everything went left. Our plane on was on the verge of flipping and flipping and flipping. Everybody panicking inside there. There was this lady over on the side. She was talking that big bad talk. She was talking on that phone, just getting it, getting it, just talking it in. And then she's, oh shh. Why, why, why are we doing? Oh god dang! She was nervous as I don't know what. I looked over at the chick over there. I'm like, this woman was up there talking. Whoopi Goldberg in the face. She was up there talking that talk. Now she's scared. And saints, according to the natural, it was, it was according to the natural. You look at it in the natural, it looked like death there. But I had understood the spiritual implication. I know the principality over Mississippi. I know this principality. This principality done governed many uh, events in Mississippi. Lynchings. All that stuff, racism, prejudice, all that different type of stuff that has happened. Hatred, no love, uh, lack of gospel being taught, no prophets, all that different type of stuff going on in that land. All right. All the blood shed, whether it be white, whether it be black. So I know it's the principality. We are aware of the principality there. Now, according to the natural, it looks like death. We can't do nothing. Pilot is panicking. Everybody panicking. 
Nobody in their right mind. It looked like it's all over. Juan over there. <laughs> and, 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 um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, so, so I sense the nervousness now. It's not like I don't sense no nervousness. Everybody up on that plane is, 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 is scared and panicking. But I'm like, let me, let me say this. If, if, even if I was supposed to die, guess what? I'm not going to die nervous. Hell no. I said, I'm going to cheer this thing out there. I'm just going to release the authority on here, and I'm going to cheer this thing out. I ain't scared of death. So, 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 so my son see me calm there. I said, here's what we're going to do. Everybody panicking. I tell my sons, I said, we're going to lift our hand up over this plane, right? And this plane going to stop turning and twisting. And, and, and is it, we not going down. Even though they think we going down. Them doggone pilots, they, they, they don't even got no faith. How you a pilot? You ain't got no faith in your abilities. <laughs> and some of them pilots be drinking. You need the Holy Ghost for everything. Because you're you, you not really all that safe. You got to activate your safety. I said, we're going to put our hands up. I said, I'm gonna speak, I'm gonna speak to the storm. We're we gonna get we're gonna get out of this. We're not dying in here. She, I ain't finished. And when I finish, when I finish, then whatever needs to happen can happen. I ain't finished. So I, I I was up there. I said, I, I spoke to a storm right there in front of all these heathens. <laughs> we had a flight full of heathens. If we wasn't in there, that flight would have went down 100 million percent. I ain't care who was watching me. Because everybody, they want Jesus to intervene now. I don't care if they're atheists or not. They need some help when they, when they don't know what's going to happen. Because they're not ready to die. Wicked people don't want to die. And so, spoke to that storm. And that plane was just going and going and going. And saints, lightning striking. Bro, bro, bro. It's like it's like we in a movie. The plane up there twisting around, and it's like, what the hell going on in the pilot? <laughs> the pilot, this pilot probably wanna die. He probably happy that this happening. And saints, I tell you that that plane, that plane, after I spoke and I hushed my mouth, we was right back. On the correct route, that storm died. We made it to our destination. And we overcame that. And what looked like that plane was going to drop down, that plane stood strong. No ease. I mean, no, no, uh, no stress, no worry. Just ease. And everybody in there got to see the power of prayer, the power of decreeing, the power of profit. And we was inside of that, 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 that seat. And everybody saw all that just stopped right there. All that storm, all that uncertainty, all that death that was hanging in the balance right there just vanished. You're never supposed to get worried in this life. Worry is not your DNA. Just think about it like this. Because I've had guns pointing at me before. I've had point blank guns pointing at me before. I told you that story when the man drove right in front of me and pulled out his silver pistol. And I ain't have no type of I had no type of time to prepare for nothing other than I had a dream the other night. And I saw somebody walking with a silver gun, but they weren't pointed at me. I just saw it in the dream. The next day I'm walking right there. And guess what? All of them. We see, we see, we see all these cars driving past. All of a sudden, now this car out of nowhere. I'm walking, it just drive past. The guy, he got the silver pistol. He go point the silver pistol. And as the Lord lives, 
The Spirit of the Lord just spoke through me and said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And he clicked his gun back inside and sped off. I was in Tampa, Florida playing at a basketball, at, a, at, a, at my basketball, I had a personal basketball gym at my house. I got all those things through seed. I was sowing seed as a little boy, was honoring God with my finances. My mother used to give me different um, allowances. I wasn't even doing no chores. My mother will always do the chores. <laughs> I wasn't doing no chores, doggone it. I ain't against chores, but I was getting paid like I was doing chores. I wasn't doing no chores. But I would take that seed. I used to see my mom. My mother was the biggest sower in the church. I used to, I used to watch her sowing. So guess what I did? I took my seed as a little boy. Every, everything that she would give me, and she didn't know I was sowing. I would sow my whole seed. You know how you break up things in portals? If I got $20, $40, $60, I would give the whole 60 And guess what? Sometimes I'll get more money than I, I got the last week. And guess what? I'll keep on sowing all of it. I'll keep on sowing all of it. I'll keep on sowing. And so we'll go to the gas station. My mother would say, you, you got that money on you? I'm going to use some of it. And guess what? I done had sold that money. I had to find I had to find a code like I was trying to look for the money. Because I never wanted to be celebrated for what I was doing. I, ne I never wanted to be celebrated for what I was doing. I just wanted to do it. Because sometimes celebration, they get to your head. Then you look, you look for the celebration to actually do it. I never wanted to be celebrated. My mother would say, where, 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 where the money at? And I didn't even tell my mother that I had sold. I ain't tell her I had sold because I didn't want her to worry. I just wanted to look like I, I had just took the money and enjoyed it. I didn't want to look like I had sold, make a, make a, you know. So I just did stuff. I just did a lot of spiritual stuff. And while I was sewing, I told you somebody bought me a basketball court. So I'm at the basketball court at my house. I'm, I'm young. I'm probably like, we probably like in school now. You know, we, we, we in the school with them. Girls trying to hop on you and stuff. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Blessed be God. They ain't work out too well when they write you letters. And, and, and then you forget to throw it away out your pocket, dog, on it. And your mama is an investigator. All you women in here, you investigation. You need to investigate some of these homicides and these. We need some woman investigating this voter fraud. If these women would investigate the voter fraud, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't have been no issue. We would have got this solved a long time ago. <laughs> you try to get a crazy check. Your mama done opened up the mail and done saw you getting a crazy check for 1500 <laughs> You tried to hide it. You, know, this, you, you get 1500 for a uh, crazy check. How, how, how much is it? 1500 about 1500 I saw one at five and two zeros in the back. About 1500 said crazy check, mentally unstable. You got a meeting on Wednesday at 9 a.m. You go back again every Wednesday, every two weeks. Nine. <laughs> they ain't work out too well when you when you put that little letter inside of your pocket because you ain't, you ain't even, you thought it was innocent. You ain't know them girls was like that. Them girls was wild. They done got all type of descriptions in there. Like, like what? What? I, I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I, I, I don't know who this is, mother. Mama, mama, mom, mom, mommy, mom, mom, mommy, mom, mom, mommy. I, I don't know who this is. I don't know. Well, don't she in your class? No, I don't know where she at. I don't know where she at. She she probably is in the class. I don't know if she in the class or nothing like that. I don't know who she is. What, 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 I'm coming up to school tomorrow to find out. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me confess, let me confess, let me confess, let me confess, let me confess. All right. She sit right next to Booger Johnson, all right? Booger Johnson sit on the left side, all right? And, and Booger Johnson, they, they be talking, all right? I don't know how, I think her and Booger Johnson had broke up. She probably wrote this letter because she feeling little, she wants some love. That's all my, 
Booger, Booger Johnson right there. Since you gotta be careful, you that's why some of y'all, some of y'all that didn't live life for long enough, be careful when you driving people vehicles because you don't know what they be doing in there. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't mess around. You don't try to lift up the seat. You don't know what you are gonna find. You. Don't... <laughs> I'm joking around. I'm joking around, man. I'm joking. Around. I'm just playing. Around. I'm just playing. I'm just joking. Luke chapter sixteen. Luke chapter sixteen. Luke chapter sixteen. Don't trust them people that talk too fast. When they talk too fast, them the one that that's tricky. You gotta watch out for them. When you see people talk real fast, you gotta watch out for them. Man. Shoot, you gotta watch out for them when they're talking too fast. Now, why you talking so fast like that, man? Nah, I gotta watch you, man. I can't drive. I can't touch your steering wheel. <laughs> I can't touch your steering wheel. You know what I'm saying? Steering wheel is personal anyway. You, you ever seen somebody random just talk to man? I use your car, man. I'm just going to work, man. Yeah, you going to work, but I don't want your fingerprints on my vehicle. <laughs> I don't know. I, I saw you with a woman the other day named Rhonda. I don't know what what been going on with them hands. I don't know. She, I don't know what been going on with your hands, man. Shoot. Luke chapter 16, verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Look what it says right here. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? So saints, when the Lord is bringing you into wealth, he gonna give you what belongs what was in the possession of another man and see what you do with it. If you sow, you establish in your own. Hallelujah. Now I can literally testify of this because I went from, uh, I was jump started with, with Dr. Mike Murdoch and then boom, I just took off. You see what I'm saying? I took off, I, I went through that line and then, boom, I went hidden for a time. I ain't minister or nothing like that. And then I just came back with JHM Ministries and boom, took off like that. But I kept on sewing. I kept on sewing. I kept on sewing. And the seed had promotion in it. Every new dimension that God is going to give you is going to be unlocked by you sowing something greater into him. Every new dimension, every new location, every new geography. Sometimes you may want to obtain things and possess things and be promoted to things, but your seed is going to show the Lord of your readiness. Look what he's telling you right here. If you have not been faithful with a righteous man, who will commit to your trust? So the Lord uses the seed for you to grow your trust. Not only your trust in God, but God's trust in you. Your seed is telling the Lord, okay, I, I'm a steward of what you give me. I'm a steward of what you put in my hands. So you can trust me with the increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look how the Lord is weighing out promotion here. He's weighing out promotion by saying, this is what you're doing. So I'm going to respond to you with more than enough. Look, look how it is. He's promoting based upon the seed. That's, that's, that's what he's looking at. Now, saints, with all this knowledge that the Lord looks at the seed when he's ready to give you increase, when he's ready to give you multiplication, that's why you should be enthusiastic about sowing seed. That's why sowing seed must become your go-to weapon in the spirit. Because saints, like I told you, you can pray all day. If you're not a seed sower, some of your prayers can fall to the ground. You may say, well, prophet Elijah prayed earnestly, but Elijah was a seed sower. 
Look at when he about to prove that God, the Lord God is over the prophets of Baal. He says, let's go to the altar and let's sow. Let's put our seed on the ground and let's see who God answered their seed. And that's how the Lord answered by fire. Because, because sowing seed is the fire of God. That's how the Lord, Lord burns up all wickedness operating in your life. Burns up your desire to backslide. Seed sowing burns up your desire to backslide. When you sow and seed, you get tamed. When you name seeds, you tame your backsliding. You can't even backslide when you're sowing. Because the seed will give you respect for God. You'll say, Lord, I respect you too much to entertain something that you ain't having on my schedule. I love you too much for me to mess up and, and play around with stuff that you done gave me power over. I love you too much to let myself entertain anything that's going to separate me from what your will is for my life. When you sow and you lock into what God revealed to you, seed sowing actually exposes where all timers have been operating. So wherever you forgot what the Lord said to you, wherever you forgot what the Lord spoke to you and commanded you, the seed will bring it to your remembrance and bring it fresh. Sometimes over time, people get you away from the will of God because you watch their decisions. You see them do something. And so you, you start becoming lukewarm. You see people say stuff. And so your honor start dying off. You see people, they wayward. They all over the place. So, so you start losing your hedge. And the seed is what brings your recollection back into protection. You need recollection protection. Recollection protection. That you are God's selection. You're the apple of his eye. And his eyes want to see you moving with apples. <laughs> How you like them apples? He want you to be the fig tree. The spirit of the Lord told me that the fig tree was a sower. The, the, the spirit of the Lord told me that the fig tree was the sower. The spirit of the Lord told me that the fig tree was assigned to sow into King Jesus' ministry. The Lord told me that the fig tree not only had a soul, not only was the fig tree a spirit, not only a fig tree had an assignment, but the fig tree was a sower. That fig tree had a seed that it was going to plant that was going to bring pleasure to King Jesus. When King Jesus looked for the fig tree, he was looking for the seed account. He was saying, where's the seed that you're going to sow into me? Because King Jesus eat the seed. That, that's, his, that's his meat. That's his enjoyment. That's his pleasure. That's his, that's his offering. That's how he get, uh, 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 he get uh, overflowed when he's able to digest your honor, when your honor is an experience for him, when your, when your sowing is an experience for him, when, when, your, when your desire to take care of King Jesus becomes your fascination. And by the way, it's very beautiful. When you take on a mindset of taking care of King Jesus, because remember, a fox without hole, foxes got holes and birds got nests, but the son of man ain't got nowhere to lay his head. What, 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 what you got to catch is that the son of man is looking for a place where he can release his anointing, where he can release his impartation because somebody is honoring him. They're supplying all of his needs according to their riches in glory. They're operating in their heavenly functionality. So now they're giving to him what he wants. And so that's why David was able to say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. The Lord been anointing many people for years, for ages to take care of him. And many people been taking in that anointing. They've been receiving that anointing and saying, Lord, I like that. I got that. I know why I'm here for you. I know 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 I'm here for you. I got it. I understand now. I can see clearly now. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. I can see. I can see it. No, I'm here for you. Huh? 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 Luke chapter 16. Verse 12. If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Saints, when you sow and see, you got to remember, you just establishing your own. You got your own inheritance. Saints, some of you are multimillionaires. 
You got to stop thinking like you like like you going to be going to the thrift store. Stop thinking like you're going to be underneath debt. Stop thinking like your job is the only income. The Lord give you your job for you to utilize that job to unlock your inheritance. That job is bringing you into seed. That wherever money is coming into you is just a test. Pass the test and you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise the Lord. I'm a living witness. You can look at Prophet Joshua and see that it's real. You can see that it's real. You can see that this is real. You know, I got so much gadgets and stuff. I got Versace, Versace bags. I got all type of stuff in here. But one of my major uh, fascinations here is uh, I've been buying a lot of Bibles. I, I surround myself with a lot of Bibles. You got to you gotta love the word of God. You got to love the word of God. Got all type of stuff. You know, we got all type of stuff in here, all type of gadgets in here. Uh, how many of y'all would like to see me for Christmas? <laughs> I'm messing with people. I'm messing with folk. Man, I got Gucci wallet right here. Just, I just want to mess with you. I just want to mess with you. Nah, I don't think none of y'all pulled on me hard enough, so I'm not trying to see you. Nah, I'm not trying to see you, man. Nah, I'm not trying to see you, man. You ain't pull on me long enough, man. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to see what's moving. I'm trying to see what's, I'm trying to see what's tugging, what's, what's pulling. Huh? I'm trying to see what's pulling, man. Nah, man, nah, man. I don't, I don't want hit. I don't want hit player. I don't want hit player. I don't want hit player. I don't, I don't see no tugging. I don't see no tugging. I don't see no tugging. I don't see no loving. Huh? So, uh, We give glory to God. We give praise to God. Those of you all, I just want to thank you. All of you all that been sowing, I, I, I love it. Uh, those of you all that sow by mail, please keep on doing that. Those of you all that sow by push pay, please keep on doing that. Those of you that sow by cash app, please keep on doing cash app. Those of you that sow by um, uh, PayPal, keep sowing by PayPal. All of you all saw so, so that, but those of y'all that sold by the mail, I really love that. I got some of y'all seeds in my hand. Carol, you sold $771. Girl, you, you going wild and crazy. Y'all going wild and crazy. I got some of you all these seeds in my hand, okay? I want some of y'all understand that. We got the seeds in the hand. Uh, those of you all, thank you so much for sending your seed via the mail. I see all of you all seeds, and I'm praying over your seeds right now. All of you, I'm praying over your seeds right now. I'm praying over all of your seeds right now. And all of them, push pay, cash app, all the seeds right now. I'm praying over them. Father, in King Jesus' name, all my partners, Lord, I've been ministering today. And this has been a blessed time. Thank you so much. We give you all the glory for your mighty wisdom, your mighty knowledge. Thank you so much such a special mantle and a special grace that flowed. And I speak the blessing over the precious people that belongs to us. I speak the blessing over their life. Lord, I speak the prophet's reward upon every single person. I command the blessing on you. I command the blessing on you. I command the blessing on you. I command the works of your hands to prosper. I command the works of your hands to be blessed. I command the works of your hands to increase. I command harvests to be gathered by you. I command the wealth transference over your life in King Jesus' name. I command you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I command you to be a ruler over wealth, to be a ruler over health. I speak to your bodies. I say, be made whole. I command health in your body. I command sickness and disease to go in the name of Jesus. I command every ailment, every infirmity to leave you. I speak against attacks to take you out prematurely. I speak against death, de death in Jesus name. I break your power. I cancel you. I command you to go back to the pits of hell in the name of Jesus. I cancel any sabotage working against your workplace. Any witchcraft working against your provision, your mind, your body, your energy, your, your faith, your future. Whatever Satan has sent to divert you from the will of God, I break his power right now. I call forth a new wave of heavenly wisdom. I command an impartation 
of sound wisdom. I command my spirit upon my partners, upon those of you all sowing into me, upon those of you all that's connected to me. I command my spirit upon you. Come on. In King Jesus' name. King Jesus' name. I got you. You got me. We got each other. Let's go to heaven.